If we don't each take care of ourselves, Did you just put the ring on, or are you in the first few years of your marriage? Welcome to the First Year Marriage Show, a podcast dedicated to helping newlyweds navigate the first few years of marriage. My husband, Marcus, and I will be sharing marriage tips to help you build a strong foundation for your marriage. We believe having a strong foundation is essential to having a happy, healthy, and lasting marriage. We will also be learning from the experiences of awesome married couples who have been where you are today taking from them lessons to help you build a strong foundation for the lasting marriage you desire. Take a deep breath, relax, learn, and enjoy the show. Welcome back to another episode of the First Year Marriage Show. We hope you're having a really great summer. Ours has been very busy. We're enjoying as much of the sun as we can. We would love for you to leave us a review on iTunes for this podcast if you haven't already. That helps the show to reach a greater audience. For all the show notes for this episode, visit firstyearmarriage.com slash 37. Enjoy this week's episode. Hello, listeners, and welcome to another episode of the First Year Marriage Show podcast. I am your host, Marcus Kusi, and our guest for this week is Tanya Pajovic. Tanya has been married for 10 years. She lives in Boulder, Colorado with her husband and their two sons. She's a former Fulbright fellow to Solvania, a writer, and consultant. Tanya is also the author of the best-selling book, Nine Steps to Heal Your Resentment and Reboot Your Marriage. Tanya, thank you very much for coming to the show today and coming to share a first-year story. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you met your husband? Hi, Marcus. Thanks so much for having me. You're um, welcome. Yeah, sure. So, so Ken and I met actually here in Boulder, Colorado at a, at a local restaurant restaurant and bar that no longer exists. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's kind of funny. At one point we went back and tried to recreate our, recreate some of our early first dates and none of the, none of the places, they all had sort of disappeared from there. But yeah, so we, we met here and that's where we still live now. With the place I guys met, do you guys go there and see a different building or see a different restaurant or see a different uh, thing over there? It's actually a parking garage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's wow. kind of funny. But um but it's funny we there had been, there was a um piano, a pianist playing piano and we were talking about something about the piano and music is is one of Ken's passions and one of my passions too and the music theme has still continued in our relationship. So that part that heart has stayed the same. So Oh, nice. Nice. That, that's very interesting to know that music is one thing that keeps you guys together and keeps you guys going. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. how would you describe your first year of marriage in one or two words? I know it's sometimes difficult for some couples and it's easy for some other couples, but in one word, how do you describe your first year of marriage? Sure. Um, I would say change, big change. We, um, we went through so many giant changes that first year. We were married in July, and I was teaching at the time at the University of Colorado at Denver. And in the fall, I actually um, left my I left my position to start to start my own business as a consultant. So that you know that was a giant change in itself. And then instead of working out elsewhere, I was working from home. And at the time, Ken actually. Um, his business, um, he's a, he works in um, IT, he's a tech guy, and the company he was working for um, switched a lot of their folks to working from home as well. So he kind of went through another big shift at the time. And um, so then he started working from home, um, and we both still work from home in the basement. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was a big change. And then, um, and then pretty shortly after, I became pregnant with our first son, Nico, who was born right after our first year anniversary. So there was a lot of giant transitions going on for us both. Mm-hmm. So if you were to pick one or two giant transitions that you guys went through within our first year, um, it could be some of the adjustments that you had to go through just trying to live together as a married couple. What would mm-hmm. those be? You know, I think it would really be just um, because there was so much sort of up in the air about our lives. And we did all, we also married later in life. And I think, 
I think that was also a different transition. You know, we were both pretty independent people, had our own our own lifestyles, could come and go as we pleased. Um, and so I think just kind of dealing with all those big changes and, um, you know, trying to come together and really learning a new life together while there were so many pieces in flux about, you know, our identity. You know, we were no longer single. We were married, but we both had giant identity shifts going on at work. And then, um, you know, and then a few months after that, I became pregnant. And then, you know, then, become, you know, shifting into that identity to become parents all while we were still sort of getting to know each other. Um, you know, it was a bit, it was a lot, I think. Yeah. Does that I, answer your question? Yeah. It, it gives me more opportunities to ask further questions because I'm really interested in what the scenario was for you guys. So, mm-hmm. so you made mention about you guys getting married when you were a little bit older. I know mm-hmm. most couples get married when they're younger. Mm-hmm. And when you get married when you're older, you probably already have, ways of doing things or you have the way you spend your money. Nobody tells you what to do with yeah. your life or what to spend your money or where to go, all that kind of stuff. What do you think helped you guys to be able to mesh those completely different uh, personalities so that you could live together as a married couple? I think part of it was time, you know, letting everything kind of shake out as, as we were going through all these changes. I think part of it was time. And truthfully, I think part of it was becoming parents together because once you you know as you know once you have children it's a whole other ball game and oh it, yeah right yeah <laughs> you it's know very and it, different. yeah and it's not about you anymore and then you have to put somebody else first and um and you really have to find a way to come together whereas i think even when you're first married before you have children i think you can still maintain some more independence than when once you become a parent, in so, my yeah, in my experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, just give us one scenario, like with your money, for instance. I don't know mm-hmm. whether you guys are a couple that combines your finances, or you have separate bank accounts. Like, how do you guys go about that? Ah, oh, we do both. We we um, combine our main accounts are combined, and we each have separate we each also have a separate account. And because we both work from home, we also then have separate. Um, Ken has a side business as well. So we also both have then separate business accounts. So yeah, so it, it's it's all been a process. But you asked me what's helped. I think the other thing that really helped a lot is humor. Um, you know, I think just being able to, I think when things are kind of tricky, you know, it helps to be able to break the, to kind of break the tension and joke about it, joke about something and kind of come back together that way. So that, you know, if you're having maybe an intense conversation or trying to figure something out, that can help, you know, provide some levity and and help you, you know, help at least it's helped us find our way back to each other in plenty of plenty of different situations. I know humor it's one thing that really helps us as human beings to function very, very well because once sometimes when you're down and you are really, you know, struggling with something and someone comes to you and they share a joke or they share a laughter with you and they put a smile on your face, that alone can enlighten you and make you really proud and be like, okay, wow, I get, I'm, I'm alive right now. And this person brought something that I really needed to be able to help me move forward with what I was, I was doing. Yeah. It's such a gift, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm glad you guys share that because as a couple, if you cannot laugh together, I personally don't see how you'll be able to go through life together in the long term. Ah, oh, I love that. I yeah. think, yeah, that's a good, that's a really good point. During the 10 years that you guys have been married, I know you've shared the laughter that you guys had to, you know, laugh together, um, juggling finances, juggling your different lifestyles, especially since you guys got married at a later age. Um, what do you think is one thing that has really had a big impact or one struggle that you guys had have had over the 10 years that you've been married that you think if you share with our listeners, they'll be able to learn a lot of insights that they can also apply in their marriage? It seems to me, uh, and and this might just be for my husband and I, um, for whatever reason, we have had sort of of a pattern in our marriage where we have really gone through crises at the same time. So, for example, um, Ken's father died right as literally right as my mother fell and broke her hip. Um, And then my mother died two years ago. We've gone through a lot of really, really big stuff together. 
And I, and I think one of the pieces that we have really learned or what, what I have really found is that if we don't each take care of ourselves, if we don't, you know, take, get enough sleep or do something that fills our souls, we don't have anything for each other, you know, and we can't, neither one of us can really save the other person, you know? So I think that we have learned that, you know, you can't give what you you don't have. So it's really important to, to, I'm not saying take care of yourself at the expense of the other person, but I, I think it's, it's important that your well is filled so that you can then come together and help support each other. You know, I mean, because there's always times where I think every couple goes through times where everything just seems to fall apart at the same time and you have to be able to count on each other. Right. Yeah. You definitely have to do that because you cannot yeah. do it alone. No, no. And I'm kind of give and take there, you know, and, and how you get to that give and take. I don't know that, that that's probably different with every couple, but this is what's, kind of worked for us, you know. I, I know with um, things falling apart, especially in marriage, it brings a lot of stress. And when you have kids, it just escalates everything because you have yeah. to make sure you, you can feed them and the home that you guys are living in is really peaceful. And there wasn't a lot of stress on the kids because the slightest stress or the lightest thing that is sense that mom and dad are not doing well it kind of puts certain things on them that it, it makes them act in a different way because they don't feel secure at home at all. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're so right. You're so, so right. I mean, I, I say that, you know, we're, we're our, like our own little ecosystem around here, whatever, if somebody's upset, you're going to know it because it just swirls that energy swirls around the family. Yeah. What do you think is one struggle that you personally had that really impacted your marriage? Like it could be a shift in mindset or a shift in an attitude from each one of you. I think it would be learning learning to count on each other. I I think because we were both so independent when we got married, it, it, in some ways it seemed easy to just sort of take care of it on our own, you know. But I think um, I think the shift is. Um, really, truly, I mean, you're married, even though you're married, I I've seen so many people who still have a door open in their mind of, you know, oh, if things don't work out, I can escape or something like that. But I think it's, it's once you make that complete commitment that no matter what, I'm not leaving no matter what, you know, I'm here. I think that that then things can become really rich because then, you know, if you have an argument or, or something comes up, it's, just an opportunity to find a way to get closer, you know? That's, that's definitely true because sometimes you might not think about what is going on right now and the impact it will have on your marriage. But after you've been through that moment or that period of time and you look back to what was actually going on and where you guys have moved from, let's say, from point A to point B, and then you'll be able to appreciate everything that you guys went through because you know and really played a big role in helping you guys move forward in the right direction for your marriage. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. So with your first year, I know you guys had a lot of, uh, a lot of fun and there are times that, you know, you struggled and there are times that you had a lot of smiles and you were happy with each other in terms of things that you could do together and things that you could do to bring smiles on each other's faces. What are one or two funny or exciting moments that you think when you guys sit down today or when you sit down maybe 20 years from now or 30 years from now, you will look back to that will bring a smile on your faces. From that first year of marriage? Yes. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, you know, I have to say, I think we had some pretty magical first dates, you know, and I think... Magical. Yeah. Really can, magical. Can yeah. you explain magical to us in this scenario? Yeah, good, good question. Uh, um, you know, I just, we both felt such a pull to each other. You know, we both felt this, you know, pretty, pretty intense connection right off the bat. And um, for example, we went on one of our early dates, we went... Ken had uh, Ken has some friends who are musicians, and we had gone to see a friend of his play uh, some jazz. Uh, it was a jazz show, and there were a couple of friends that he knew, and it was in the basement of this bar. And 
it was a really small little room and a small little group. And it was one of our early first dates. So we didn't know each other that well. And they were passing around, um, they were passing around art books of all things, which I'd never seen. You know, usually if you see some music out, I don't know, you're just listening to the music and they were passing around art books. And it just seemed like, what, wow, what a great idea to have this art at the same time while they're doing this jazz. And we were sitting next to each other and I just, you know, we both talk about that night as being like, wow, we just felt this, just this, this connection that, um, you know, it was just, it, it was just a deep, just a deep connection, you know, and, you know, it's still there. And, you know, sometimes you don't see it as often as, you know, especially when things get a little crazy with the kids <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, but it was, it, we really had some, just some really wonderful, wonderful first dates. That's really amazing. Um, I'm glad you guys still remember these moments because even though a lot of couples and personally, I don't journal as much as I should. We don't journal. It's good that we ca- you can all remember, sit down and remember those magical moments, as you said, so that, you know, you know, okay, this is something that, this is why we are together. This is what really helps us feel connected with each other so we can be really intimate and be able to stay together as a married couple. Because sometimes in the business of life where you have work to do, you have chores to do, you have kids to take care of, you forget those little or those precious moments and that really helps you guys to stay connected and really get together on a different level. Yeah, you're right. I think, I mean, I think you're really wise. You you seem to have this all, you seem to have this all down. I wish I had found your show. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't have it all figured out. I'm still learning. That's why I like interviewing couples like you guys so that you can share your story. Then I can also learn one or two things from it that I can apply in my own life and in my marriage and also help our listeners who are listening to us right now do the same thing to their marriage and their lives also. So I haven't figured it all out. I make mistakes, trust me. Yeah, well, we all do. But, <laughs> but you know what? You seem so positive too. And and that that I think is another trait that goes so far in a marriage or in a relationship, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to say this to be, uh, I don't know what word to use, but I think as a as a human being, irrespective of the difficulty that you're going through, if you have that positive mindset that things are going to work out and you're making the effort to change things and not depending on someone to change things for you, it really will help you to move from maybe a bad situation or a bad circumstance into something. Even if it's not the best, something way better than what you used to be in. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. So I know with marriage, like I personally, for instance, I like improving myself and at least I try to read either a book or an article or listen to a podcast that's going to help me improve my marriage and to do things with my my, my wife. Um, and I know with you guys, you probably also have been through something similar. What do you think is one resource that has really helped you guys improve your marriage or improve yourself so that you can really connect with each other? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I love, you know, I, I agree. That's so, so, so important, you know, um, one of my favorite books on all this, it's a book by David code code at C O D E. And it's called to raise happy children, put your marriage first. It, it's a really great overview because number one, it, it addresses this issue, you know, some people will just put their children first, always, no matter what. And while their marriage kind of is in the background, you know, dying a slow death. Um, But the other cool thing that he talks about in this book is he talks a lot about how your, about how the way you were raised, about how the family patterns about, um, he talks about brain science and he kind of just outlines why we re- react so strongly when we get upset, you know, and he brings in a lot of brain science in a very simple, easy to understand way, and then shows you, you know, how you can change it. And when you see it like that, it's, it's just a great, it's just a great primer in it. It helps take away, take out some of the personal sting of, you know, and it's something that happens when you're having an argument and you feel like, oh, it's my fault, or I should be this way or that way. This shows you, you know, the stuff that we're all struggling with because of because of the way our brains work and here's here's all you have to do to change that. So 
So with that book that you read, um, can you share one one scenario in your own marriage or in your own life that our listeners can relate to so they can be- get a better understanding of how this resource will also apply in their marriage or in their life if they go out there to grab a copy of the book? Sure. So for example, I grew up in a household um, that was pretty critical, you know, so there was a lot of, a, a lot of kind of constant criticism. Um, my parents immigrated from the former Yugoslavia and anyway, they had kind of a lot of stuff going on a hard, hard life. And this, this was kind of one of the things that came of that. And um, anyway, so I, so for me to kind of get criticism, like really um, is, is, is really hard for me. Um, it has been in the past. I've, I've like learned a lot and dealt with that, obviously. Anyway, let's say, um, let's say Ken says something to me. Um, let's say he says something that I, I take to be somewhat critical. So what I learned in this book is my, basically, um, your brain goes into fight flight mode, your amygdala kicks in and you suddenly have all these chemicals that are coursing through your system. It's, it's like adrenaline and it, you know, uh, your stress, stress levels really rise and you literally cannot think clearly in such a time. Right. And so your instincts, what your body's telling you is fight or flight, run, run and leave away, run, run away. Because like some memory from my childhood was triggered in my brain. And so what I've learned, and so what happens in that instance, if I were to either fight back or run away, like that does absolutely nothing for a marriage, right? And then, you know, and then things start to go downhill pretty quickly. And, yeah. and so, um, you know, then what I like learn, you know, learning and I've, and I've read the same concept in many books. I just like this book because it, it kind of packs everything under the same cover, you know, and then kind of learning like, you know, to recognize that, right. Okay. Here's what's going on. Let me take a deep breath. Let me step outside. Let me get grounded or do whatever I need to do so I can come back and kind of address this calmly. And then that way you can reconnect. And the more that you reconnect, then you strengthen those neural pathways in your brain versus strengthening the neural pathways in your brain that are all about fighting or or, or running away. Yeah. It, it's very difficult to change those habits that you've developed over a long period of time, like maybe 10, 20 years that you've you know been used to that. So I'm really glad you, you've, you've been able to share in your own experience how this book has helped you as an individual and also helped you with your marriage because I know you can apply the same principle in your day-to-day activities whenever there's an issue that or an argument comes up out of the blue, out of nowhere. It could be about something really, really silly. Like maybe you left this dirty spoon on the table. It should be in the sink and you know that will bring up a heated argument. But because of this simple principle, you'll be able to step back and just calm down, relax and not be on the offensive to your spouse or to whoever you're talking to. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if you've read Brene Brown at all. Her work is just so incredible, you know, and this is her. I, I might be now attributing this to the wrong person. But what I've learned is when you kind of fly off the handle, it's usually not because of what's going on in front of you. It's usually like triggered by something that's happened in your past. But, you know, we freak out and then we kind of are trying to deal with it in the present with our spouse when it's really like we're really reacting to something that happened a long time ago in a in a land far, far away. It piles up. Like, that's all I always say. It piles up. Today, something happens. You don't say anything. Tomorrow, the same thing happens again. And then something yeah. else comes. And then the slightest thing, boom, we have a big fire going out of the house. Yeah. yeah. So I know you've been married for over 10 years. And you've been married for close to 10 years. Just, I'm, I'm really sorry about saying over 10 years, I know you're almost approaching your 10th no. anniversary. Yeah. You've been married for at least nine years and going towards your 10th ten, anniversary. What do you think is one or two things that really helps you guys to stay together with your marriage? Because I know you made mention about laughter being something that bonds you guys together. Mm-hmm. Is there any other thing that helps you guys to grow together in your marriage? Yeah. Humor is so big. Laughter is so big. Oh my gosh. I can't, I just have to say that again. Cause it's just so big. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, that is, and then for me, what's important is, is, um, for me, what's important personally is meaningful connection, you know, make, so I check in with Ken a lot, you know, and, um, 
just to make sure that we, it's, it's so easy sometimes, you know, with the kids and work and whatever that sometimes, you know, so many conversations can end up just being so surface level and about logistics and what we're going to eat and whatever other plans we have going on. And so I, I really make sure to check in with him pretty regularly, you know, to, to really that we have, you know, we try and have some, you know, pretty good talks still to connect. Um, I think what helps us as well is we're both interested in, you know, we're both have similar values, which is, you know, which is super important. Um, you know, we both like to have kind of like those deeper conversations, not always, but you know, it's important to have them sometimes and not just always be talking about groceries or bills, (laughs) you know, (laughs) yeah, Yeah. everyday talk. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what do you think is one lesson or marriage advice that you wish you had known before you got married? I think it would be, you really have to know yourself, you know, just keep working on yourself because if you don't, you know, and that's a lifelong, that's a lifelong endeavor anyway. Right. But just like what you said, you keep working on yourself. I think you have to keep working on yourself because if you don't know yourself, then it's hard to, um, you know, it's hard to really be able to, um, have your needs met or be able to compromise um, and to really meet in, in that, you know, more of that sacred space. Um, do, do you kind of get what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm trying to get what you're saying. Uh, if, if I'm summarizing it right, it's what you're trying to say is that if you know yourself, you'll be in a better position to talk well, communicate better or have meaningful conversations or relate well with your spouse or even be able to, figure out what makes you tick so you can communicate that to your spouse and they can be able to help you with those things that you want them to do. Like let's say you speak a different love language and they, your spouse also speaks a different love language. If you know that this is the love language that you speak or this is the way that you feel loved, because you know that about yourself, you'll be able to communicate that to your spouse and your spouse will be able to communicate to you in that way, in that language, so you feel loved and you don't feel like your spouse is neglecting you or is not trying to love you in the way that you want to be loved. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that's good. I think, you know, I kind of think of it this way, like the better you know yourself, the more clear you can be in coming to the table as a full partner, you know, um, versus like coming from your power, coming from your core and saying, and being clear in what you want. I need this, or I can help you in this way versus, um, maybe overextending yourself or, um, versus just, just saying my marriage should look like this because this is what everybody else's marriage looks like, you know? So like the more, you know, yourself, the more you can then kind of like compromise with your spouse and, and grow, and I just think that that's so important because you're growing anyway. If you're not going to grow together, then you're growing apart, right? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a big thing that um, I'm really worried about sometimes because it feels like because you're unable to connect with each other, like talk, have really deep, meaningful conversations every day. Mm-hmm. And because you're unable to do that, it kind of has an impact on how you are growing together because if you don't have those deep, meaningful conversations, it's more like you're just talking about what do you want to eat? What do we, do we have to cook? What do we have to wear? What bill do we have to pay? And it's more like more or less like living as roommates and not as a married couple who've decided to commit their lives to each other. Yeah. How old are your kids, Marcus? Two and a half and nine, nine and a half months. Oh, so you're really in the thick of it then. You're, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I think that that's, I think I have to say that those were the hardest years for us. And that's when I started blogging because I just felt like this is crazy and it's so hard and nobody is talking about how hard this is. Yeah. It's not easy raising kids and being married. It definitely brings a lot of stress and a lot of roles and responsibilities that you have to take care of. It does. It really does. But you know what? I will say, I mean, I, I... I know this probably seems unimaginable unimaginable now, but my kids now, two boys, eight and six, and they are so independent and they're such good friends that it's, it's completely different. I mean, Ken and I have so much more time now and so much more connection than we were ever able to have 
back in those early years. <laughs> yeah, the early years of sleepless night. <laughs> yeah, you know, and just just not getting sleep. I think, I mean, truly that. Ah, oh, neither of my kids were good sleepers, and that alone, I think, can really sink a marriage. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's very easy to think about your spouse getting more sleep than you, or oh. you know, like and be like. Ah, oh, you are sleeping. You're getting the eight hours of sleep that I need. You're getting yeah. that six hours of sleep that I need. I only sleep maybe two hours, and I have to wake up. And then you know, like, and that could easily bring up confusion or some issues here and there because you feel like your spouse is getting is enjoying more or not putting in that much effort than you are doing. Oh, yeah, we had that fight so many times. I can't even. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's so big. And, you know, you have, I mean, they're both so young that, ah, uh, I, I wish I had some good words of wisdom for you because that really is just such a hard time yeah. with not sleeping. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy, but you have to do your best and still know that you are in this together and mm -hmm. just try to work things out together. And the more you talk, the better yep. you'll be able to voice your concerns and be able to talk, to, your spouse will be able to help you address those concerns. Yeah, it's true. And I, I, I do think there's sort of a weird thing that happens where you kind of get broken down so much that when you do, you know, when they get a little bit older, a little bit more independent, you're able to kind of, once you build back up, I think, you know, you're kind of can build back up stronger as a, as a family unit versus just a married couple, if that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Tanya, thank yeah. you very, very much for coming to share a story with us. I'm really grateful that you came to share your story with us today. And I know our listeners enjoyed it and they're going to apply the lessons that they've learned in their marriage. And I know some, there are some listeners who don't have kids right now, but they're planning to have kids so they'll be well prepared to know, okay, once you have the first baby or the second baby or you start, even if you decide to adopt a little baby, you know that this is something that you should expect and that you should be well prepared to be able to handle it together as a married couple so that that doesn't cause or bring your marriage to an end. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's helped so much just to know that you're not alone, that we're all going through the exact same thing, even even if people aren't talking about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. How, how best can our listeners get in touch with you if they want to say thank you or they want to ask you a question about dealing with the kids once they come in and dealing with how to sleep, doing the nights with each other, how to split the charts and everything. How best can listeners connect with you? And if someone wants to know a little bit about your book, can you share just about it and where they can get copies? Sure. Thank you. Uh, and, and thank you. Let me take a moment and just say thank you so much for having me on your show. I've just so enjoyed talking with you. It's, it's really, really kind of you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay. So in terms of getting in touch with me, my blog would probably be the best place. It's rebootthismarriage.com. So www, I'm sorry, HTTP, you know, colon backslash reboot, R-E-B-O-O-T, this, T-H-I-S, marriage.com. And uh, I've got tons of information on there, a bunch of resources, and you can either post a comment on there or send me an email through, through the website. Um, and my book is uh, Nine Steps to Heal Your Resentment and Reboot Your Marriage. And basically what it is, is I took all these books that I read when we were in the thick of it and our kids were the age ages that your kids were at. And I, because I was looking for kind of a roadmap and I boiled all these books down and kind of, I put it into like a quick, easy to read cheat sheet. I wanted something you could just kind of like hit all the highlights and give me, you know, tell me what I could do, what I could do right now. And, and so that's what I did, put this into a small little book. Um, right now it's available on, on Amazon. It's available as an ebook. It will be coming out as a print book in the next couple of weeks. And um, in a couple more weeks, it'll be available through Barnes and Noble and as well as some other sellers. But you can find all that information on the same website on rebootthismarriage.com. That, that's great then. Uh, thank you very much again, Tanya, for taking time to share a story with us. And I really appreciate you giving us these resources. And I know our listeners are going to go ahead and get copies of your book and read it so that they can also learn from your experience and be able to familiarize themselves with things that you've learned in life that can help them with their marriage and their life also. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really enjoyed talking with you. You guys are just doing such awesome, important work yourselves. So thank you for that. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the First Year Marriage Show. To submit a question, feedback, or suggestions for the podcast, visit firstyearmarriage.com slash feedback. Apply what you've learned today and build a strong foundation for the happy, healthy, and lasting marriage you desire. Enjoy your marriage. Enjoy your life.